Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Trade and Talk with our friend Charting Man Dan. How are you going, Dan? Very good, Alex. Nice to see you. And there's a lot happening overnight, mate. So it's early morning in Australia, but you've been busy trading all day. So what have you been watching on the chart and what uh, time frame would you like me to bring up first? Well, the daily chart's good to get an overall view. But yeah. uh, what we saw is obviously a, a short-term bounce that stalled out and now pulled back harder. We've been pretty news-driven the past few days. There's not been a lot of volume or volatility until news does come through. And, you know, we have Japan cracking down a little bit in terms of making it a little bit more strict for their exchanges and things like that. So it's still a downtrend. It's been downtrend. It's just a lower high and lower low at this point. And we're getting back to oversold on the daily time frame. So one thing that people are starting to point out is a bullish divergence of the RSI. And that's just when the RSI was lower when the price was higher. So the last dump, the RSI on the daily got into the low or the mid 20s. Yeah. And here we are with a lower price, but a higher RSI. So that's something we're keeping an eye on. I never act on that, but I do take note of it. So yeah, it's just a fresh low and we're watching the 6,000 psychological level. We did break it, but we're hovering around it and just patiently waiting for some signals that the bulls are buying the dip, which I don't really see any significant signals at this point. Yeah, I mean, ideally we would have seen at least a bounce. I know a lot of people were probably waiting to play that flush of 6,000 as well and we're just not seeing any strength at all. So as far as fundamentals go and sentiment, I think we're so close to that bottom and I think, I'm not sure what you're noticing, but I think people are genuinely kind of scared now, like, you know, oh, is Bitcoin actually going to 3,000 and 1,000 and all the bearish traders are all high-fiving and slapping themselves on the back, you know, oh, we got it right and it's kind of that point, the same at the top when everyone's kind of, oh, you know, we got it right and we're making so much money, that, that ego is starting to come through. Everyone's giving up in terms of altcoins and Bitcoin, and it's a, just a perfect, you know, resemblance for the Wall Street cheat sheet. If we do get a big flush down towards maybe five thousand, um, personally, I don't think we'll get a weekly close, maybe even a daily close below five thousand. I really think we're going to start to see the, the big players step in at those levels. And I, in the pre-interview, I mentioned that article from Chain Analysis to you about. I might link to that below, but there was an article that said basically for the first time ever throughout that you know run in December, January, February, a lot of coins changed hands from cold wallets for the first time from long-term holders to new investors and speculators. And, and those are the people that are going to be panicking and have probably sold near these lows and they're giving all those coins back to the whales and the people that sold to them at 15, 16, 17,000, those people have now tripled their Bitcoin holdings, and that's exactly what we kind of have seen play out time and time again over the years. Yeah, it's definitely a, a contrarian mindset where, uh, and I do uh, exhibit contrarian tendencies myself as a trader, where if everybody's looking in one direction, you start to look in the other direction, and that's what keeps you one step ahead of the herd. Yeah. So we had maximum euphoria up at the top, and we're going to have maximum despair when we hit the bottom. And I personally, I'm not going to try and try Tie, try and time the bottom and nail it. I'm going to be cautious and the daily trend will be very clear when it does change, but that will be the signal that I'm going to start getting more aggressive as a bull. And at this point, there are oversold bounces, but the same RSI signals that used to be great are changing. They're no longer giving great signals and we just have to be more patient. And every time I want to buy, I say, just wait for one more leg down. And that keeps me from entering too early, which I did do a couple times back in uh, earlier May and definitely learned some lessons. Didn't take huge losses, fortunately, but yeah. it's a different market environment and we're just waiting for that potential climax or a, a news event or something that's going to shift the momentum significantly. Yeah, let, do you want to talk about those lessons? So, I mean, at the moment, I've got a couple of swing trades on that are heavily in the red now, but I think lessons learned if you're not using huge leverage, you can be patient if you believe in the coins fundamentally. If you've got long-term positions, don't panic. You know, as you said then, the 15-minute oversold bounces is one of my favorites as well now after you sort of, you know, really emphasized that last year in the bull run. The fact that there's no bulls stepping in, it just leans towards the fact that, again, everyone's bearish. There's no bulls showing up. Sooner or later, that has to change. At some price point, people are going to start to see fair value. But what, what lessons would you give to people now well, I mean, obviously having a game plan. So there's people that are saying, oh, I should have sold back then. And that could be a point where you say, you know, if it hits this every time, just a, a, a walking up a stop loss level where if it 
you know, we're up at 20,000 now. If it drops down to 15,000, I'll lock in some profit and, and take it from there. And it's, again, it's people reacting to emotions and being newer to trading. Um, but the, the most important thing is sticking to the game plan. If you want to hold long and not touch anything, that's great. Just don't, you know, change your mind right near the bottom because there are going to be people that sell within five, 10 percent of the bottom. And we're going to bounce, you know, 50 to 80 to 100 percent pretty quick once that bottom is hit. And again, the bottom that we see, you know, maybe late June, early July, this bottom on the daily, that may not be the bottom bottom. You know, we're going to see a bounce and the trend will change on the daily, but it's not going to change on the weekly anytime soon. We will yeah. set a lower high on the weekly for the long term trend to change. It's going to be a couple months, at least, in my opinion. Uh, so it's it's a long term perspective kind of thing now at this point and uh, got to be watching the trends on the daily time frame that has to change first. Yeah. And you said something important there, which is why I'm kind of holding these positions open, because I do believe when we bounce, it's going to be very significant and high volume. And it's probably going to push a lot of those altcoins up significantly more than Bitcoin and Ethereum as well. So. Keep your skin in the game if you believe in the coins that you're invested in, guys. Um, and just finally, down, I just want to say congrats on the Canadian MJ that sort of played out this week. And I know you guys have been bullish and playing that sector for ages. So congrats to Canada. I'm not sure if it's actually official or when it comes into place or how does that all work, but well done. Yeah, it's, it's pretty much official. That last vote really uh, did it. I mean, it was like, you know, 90, 95%, but that made it official. But yeah, it's been a great week. It's been a, a great year and a half of trading and... Uh, looking forward to continued opportunities in that sector. Fantastic. I hope Australia follows suit at some point in the future, but uh, everything's pretty slow moving here. So have a good weekend, Dan, and thanks again for joining us today. All right, Alex. See you later. See you, mate.